Related to the question of of how some of these things are, are scoped and and determined, would love to shift the conversation towards your perspective on how you approach or determine what is the right thing to build. We started with drawing sticks. Whoever gets like, the shortest one, just <laughs> picture just uh, never makes it that's how the best Uh, problems are solved that's great exactly like it's like a game of probability (laughs) some people have worse luck than others again like this was a very iterative process for us as well again it goes back to our initial conversation about contextualizing the problem space first one problem does not need to be solved in one way Um, what i saw was actually the first solution is always the worst one. So the biggest problem usually comes with um, contextualizing the problem. You have um, everybody giving in so many ideas, but there's always one solution in everybody's mind. They always say, hey, we need to solve this this way. And that's 99% the worst way possible because everybody's first idea is the worst. Um, Creativity, I was reading somewhere, creativity makes up there's three things that make up creativity novelty of the idea diversity of your ideas and then um, the fluency of your ideas how many solutions can you throw out for the same problem so what we all do first is we look at an we pick the opportunity space first which is like what is the opportunity that we can solve for so we never build a roadmap based on features we build it based on opportunities, that there is an opportunity to increase the level of insights that a data analyst gets from our platform. Like that is the opportunity space. And how we kind of um, measure that is it's based off of a framework. And we've created a pretty internal framework. We saw the rice framework and the value effort score, nothing worked from us, for us. So we kind of created something called as the value priority score. And the value priority score, we wanted to bake in the biggest pressure that product managers and product people get, which is like traction metrics, business metrics. So we've divided it into five uh, segments. One is that this is going to help bring more sales through innovation. Nobody has this feature. Second is this is going to help sales because there's competitive parity. The same things for customer success. This is going to help retention because it's an absolutely new feature and it's really innovative. Or it is a retention feature for competitive parity. And the fifth one is enterprise readiness, where a B2B system, like the admin preferences and role, you know, creating roles, that's really important for us as well as SSO, stuff like that. So that's what contributes towards the value part. And the priority score essentially aligns with our strategic goals for that quarter. So we are a very OKR-driven company. So whatever the OKRs are, we go like, which one of our OKRs will this impact? Mm -hmm. That becomes the value priority score to be able to actually surface what opportunity we want to focus on first. That's great. And what happens when you have to say no? We say no first. It's It started with my dad, who's very genetically predisposed to say no to everything. And I feel <laughs> like I look after him. I'm, I, I'm, I'm just missing a mustache and a bald spot, and I'm going to turn into my father. <laughs> we are very rigorous with prioritization. And that is something that I feel me and um, my VP of engineering, we have that in common, which is with everything that you say yes to, you're implicitly saying no to something else. So we have to be very careful with what is happening. There's a difference between saying no in a way that still makes the person feel heard without offending someone. I was gonna say, what what is your approach to that? I would love to I would love to hear how you approach that because I'm terrified of saying no. So it, there's a different way for internal. For internal folks, I just say no. Like there's nobody like different. Like we give them a reasoning as to why. But we've done a few things that I think have really improved our experience in saying no. Um, the first one is we released what we call as a product portal. So everything that is so our roadmap that is kind of quote unquote public is it's not based off of timelines. We call it. Um, now, next, future. So there's no timeline associated with it, but essentially a priority, which is more important for people to kind of 
look at. Um, so number one, that really helps with just getting visibility into what is getting worked on. When it is something um, that a customer requests for, that product portal is like a game changer because what our CSM does is, or what we do is, we open up our portal and we say, okay, tell me what the feature is. And then we write it out in front of the user. We're, we don't have to say yes or no to anything, but we're basically just hearing them out. That's what they want to do. And then, in fact, we go a layer deeper, which is instead of calling that a feature request, we take it a little back. We're like, okay, let's talk about the problem. What are you not able to do with this? If there was a workaround, how are you working around this problem right now? And what will you lose or that, you know, if you don't get this feature, like what will happen? So these are like the three questions that are really important for us. Like, what is the urgency of this? And what would the loss be? How important, uh, the second is, how are you working around it right now? And what is the actual problem? Like, I get it. I want a drop down over here or a button over here. Great. What problem are you actually trying to solve? What is the outcome of this that you want to achieve for your business? We see that most of the times that just here getting heard and just venting saying this sucks and that sucks and everything sucks is actually very, very therapeutic for the user that's frustrated. So that's step one, which is you might not even have to go anything beyond like somebody just getting an escalation point to just talk about how everything hurts and everything's bad. The second aspect is showing a log of it somewhere is really important. So instead of saying no, you can actually just add it to the future because the future is not defined in your roadmap. You can showcase that to the customer and say, hey, as it starts coming up, we'll let you know. Usually our cycles are six months, always put an error rate of 30% to it. But we will get back to you in that time. But look, it's already here in the future. And that's all that's needed. They just need to be heard because 90% of the times they have a workaround. 90% of the times things really don't suck. You're just frustrated because you'd rather find a better way of doing it. And then if it's actually valuable, you you take it still through that value priority score. It might be a great opportunity, but you have to find that first. You need to validate whether that's important or not. A lot of the times when something actually holds merit, I go back to my other users because we do we follow the continuous discovery framework. So we go back to our other users and actually like bring that up. I'm like, is this a problem for you? And if multiple people do say yes, then yes, this problem has merit. But if it's like a one-off, we won't change our product roadmap for that.